So you're single and ready to mingle with those sexy Finnish guys and girls. But here's the thing. Don't. Because there are a number of reasons that just make dating in Finland suck. What are those? Let's go find out. Let's start with the dating culture, or more like the lack thereof. Because like anywhere else, Finns also want to get to know people, have dates, have sex, and eventually develop relationships. But taking the first step is so damn difficult for Finns, even if the interest is there. Because the Finnish ice-breaking and approaching culture is so awkward, that it's not very common to open conversations with strangers. And the most common encounter places are online dating, such as Tinder, bars, clubs, mutual friends, and events like music festivals. For example, approaching in the street, coffee places, bookstores is not common at all. But if you can do that, you immediately have an upper hand because there is no competition. I know because I've done that in the past. And to add insult to injury, Finns don't make the first move. So that means that you have to take action in order to succeed in the Finnish dating market. Finns also suck at flirting. So if you thought that the breaking the ice was the most difficult thing, think again. Because as we know, we Finns are a little bit reserved and shy at first. We don't want to waste anyone's time in pointless conversations. And at first we don't really know oh, what's happening, especially if it's a very sudden new conversation. So if you come from a very chatty culture, things may be quite one-sided at first. But if there is chemistry, we, things will open up slowly. Asking open-ended questions and get them talking is the key. And also our body language is quite subtle. So how do we know what they're thinking? Are they romantically interested or just being friendly? You probably know the famous Finnish smile. So if you see it, it could mean any of these. Actually shy, has totally fallen in love, doesn't feel any chemistry, and wants to get the hell out of there, or wants to give the best oral sex ever. And here's a quick recent story from a female follower of mine. So she had a date with a Finnish guy, they were on a date, I think it was a coffee place or something, and the guy wasn't flirting at all. So no like smiles, chest, uh, sexy compliments or anything. And then suddenly, at the end of the date, he just said, wanna come to my place? So to conclude, the Finnish communication can be scarce, but blunt and definitely honest. Are you enjoying the content? Consider sending a super thanks using the button below the video. Next, we have the equality. And Alexi, what the hell? How can equality be a problem? Well, hear me out. Because as you probably know, Finnish society is very equal and that also reflects in the dating culture. And in practice, this means that on the first date, it's very common for people to pay their own bills. So if you come from a culture where the guy always pays on the first date, well, you're in bad luck because in Finland, it doesn't really work like that. Instead, people expect to pay their own bills. But there are still some guys who do that, but expect to pay your own stuff. The good news is that we Finns don't really set up very high investment first dates. For example, going to a very fancy restaurant with rest up and everything. No. Instead, we go maybe for a drink in a bar, maybe for a coffee, walk in the park, playing mini golf, stuff like that. Because we are meeting a new person maybe for the first or the second time. So we don't really want to raise the stakes too high because we don't know anything about that person. Not communicating what they're looking for. So the Finnish dating culture is quite open and the options are all the way from hookups, friends with benefits to long-term relationships. We got them up. The point is that if you want to start dating in Finland, make sure to tell also yourself like what kind of relationship you're looking for. And when you eventually meet someone, it's good to ask early enough like what they're looking for so there won't be any mismatch or unalignments with expectations. Let's say the other person is just looking for something casual, the other one is looking for something serious and <laughs> broken heart. Finns sleep their way into the relationship. So as mentioned, the Finnish dating culture is quite open and that is the mindset for sex as well. As a regular random Finnish guy on the internet, in my opinion, sex happens sooner rather than later. And I would say it happens during the first four dates. And Dating Beyond Borders made a video about dating a Finnish woman and they actually concluded that Finns sleep their way in a <laughs> into the relationship. And as a Finnish guy, it does make sense because Finns also value good sex life. I mean, why not? And they also want to find out the sexual compatibility before they commit into the relationship seriously, like becoming exclusive. So if you come from a culture where the sex happens later, this can be a challenge. By the way, this does not mean that we Finns are easy. Instead, if we just find someone we get along well with, there's sexual tension, chemistry, and we're up for some pound chicka wow wow, let's do it. Also, Google backs up this theory because if you go to Google, you can see that people are always searching why are Finns so good in bed? So maybe at the first things may be a little bit stiff and shy, but things will get quite hot later. Not communicating how the relationship is evolving. Here's a quick story. I know of this Mexican lady who had met a Finnish guy and they got along well with, they had dates, they had lots of things in common, everything looked well. They had probably seen each other for 
two months or so. And then they were walking in the city center and they came across a guy who was friend of the, the man. And suddenly the man introduced the Mexican lady as his girlfriend. They hadn't talked about anything, whether they're a couple or, or in an exclusive relationship. He just like, boom, shot it down there. The good news is that now they've been married for years with children. It was pretty awkward because the guy already assumed they were in a relationship, even if they hadn't talked about it at all. And that is definitely something that can happen in Finland because we Finns are, again, we're not really verbally talented, even when it comes down to relationships. So my advice is that be prepared to bring this topic up yourself if nothing happens. Not communicating their emotions verbally. Here's a common Finnish joke. A couple had an argument. The lady was telling, why don't you ever tell me you love me? The guy said, how can you say that? I have told you three months ago. I will let you know if I change my mind. <laughs> As a Finnish man, I can definitely confirm this. Here's the cultural insight of the day. Finnish I love you, ma rakastan. So it's actually a very, very profound thing to say. For example, compared to the English I love you. As a Finnish guy, I almost feel like I have only 10 opportunities to use it during my life. It's that profound. So instead, we Finns express our feelings through actions. For example, are they actively messaging to you? Are they actively organizing dates? Are they generally interested in you and in your life? And of course, you can have a conversation about this. That in your culture, it's more common to say verbal things. And you can just let them know. Because in Finland, we are not really verbally expressive when it comes down to emotions. But the good news is that if they say something, they will most likely mean it. Child issues with divorces. I looked up some statistics from Statistics Finland and it turns out that international couples in Finland are more likely to break up than Finnish couples. And I guess it makes sense because there's always the cultural challenges, language barrier and so on. And of course, if you ever decide to have children and then you break up, then you're kind of stuck here because if you decide to raise the child here, you can't really leave. Or if you leave, you may not ever see your child again. So that's a risk to keep in mind. Cheating. But I looked some statistics and I found two interesting surveys. One from Ilta Sanomat from 2018. It was a summer sex survey, Kesä Seksi Kyselö, with 26,000 responses. And it turns out that 32% of women and 36% of men have cheated during their life. So almost every third thing. And to add insult to injury, they had also listed the reasons, top reasons, and the most common reason, 27%, is that they just felt like it. And in 2019, voice.fi made a similar survey with 8,000 responses, and 46% of men and 41% of women told that they have cheated during their life. Okay, the numbers are kind of alarming, but this is not a Finland-specific problem. I think in any country there's cheating, but this is just something to be aware as well. And do you know what else sucks about living in Finland? Watch this video and find out.